Hello and welcome to Nitro Talk. How's everyone doing today? Uh, if you're into nitro engines, vehicles, anything at all to do with the nitro side of the RC hobby, or if you're into uh, the RC hobby uh, in any way, and you like to make your own things, uh, you know, one of my, I, I'm going to have t-shirts one of these days. I've thought of a couple designs already. And what I was thinking of today when I was getting ready to do this video, um, don't buy it, modify it. Um, I'm sure someone else already has that saying. But anyways, I got my favorite roto starter here. This is a dual motor, dual battery roto starter. But it's kind of, pain, kind of a pain in the ass because... Uh, number one, just the fact that you got to use stick packs. Uh, I have plenty of stick packs, but I don't like using them. I hate using Tamiya plugs. Uh, and it does not uh, clip into there. It just kind of pushes up into it. Right? And they're ran uh, in series, the two batteries. So they both have to have a solid connection for it to work at all. And uh, I tell you what, uh, I, I pretty much have to like hold them in with my pinky while I'm going to hit the button. It just does not, the connections do not work good. So I've had this idea for a little bit. Uh, I want to modify this to work with a LiPo battery, a single, single LiPo battery with a Dean's plug. So, uh, that's what we're going to do today. I believe I have everything I need to do it. I got my solderer. I got some heat shrink tubing. I got some wire, uh, solder and flux. I got my little homemade helping hand here. Uh, I kind of have an idea how I want to do it. I want to be able to throw the LiPo battery inside of there. So I want to run the wire uh, to the inside of this box. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, I should be able to get it. Maybe if I have to run the wire out. Uh, but we'll, we'll see. Uh, but that's what we're doing today. Let me go ahead and start a crap ton of screws in this thing. We're going the right way. Yeah, a lot of a lot of screws in this thing. Now I'm I'm kind of reluctant to take this thing apart because I'm hoping that the gear train doesn't just pop right out on me uh, when I open this thing up but we'll get this opened up and then I'll kind of formulate a plan after I see what I'm dealing with when I get it open is that all the screws I think that is all I get that one yep yep that is all the screws all right so this just kind of pop off i'm going to be gentle and careful with this i get that one yeah try not to what is that that's the reset button it's got a circuit breaker um did i get all these screws good all right that wasn't too bad all right it's a pretty simple it's a really simple gear train uh, i got the two motors in there with pinion gears on them and they both just go straight to that steel Bearing supported on both ends. I like it. Uh, it's pretty well designed. Got a little blob of um, my framed. I hope so. Sorry. Got a little blob of grease in there to uh, lube it up. 
yeah this, okay this isn't going to be too hard at all so uh, how are we look looking good so here are my Tamiya plugs. So basically, I'm going to snip this somewhere, maybe probably down here. And then I'm going to run the wire straight down here into this box. I'll, I'll cut me a little access path for the wire to go through. Where does that... That button goes to nothing. Am I tripping or was there... That button right there, which I always assumed was like a circuit breaker. Doesn't don't some of these roto starts have a like a circuit breaker button? But it looks like maybe this one was just a placebo because there's nothing there. There is nothing where that button was. Interesting. All right, uh, let me grab my wire cutter. Let's go ahead and snip these. So yeah, like I said, they are ran in series there. So uh, when running with the stick packs, they, they both had to be uh, in full working order. You know what, I'm gonna go ahead and do my cut here. So I'll do my repair. Uh, I'll leave my repaired wires here and then I'll run the fresh on down. So I'm going to go ahead and snip these about right here. There's our old Tamiya plugs. And for wire, what I've got here is some, this is some old Stinger uh, speaker wire, car audio speaker wire, oxygen-free copper, uh, silicone coated. It's a good high quality wire. Uh, let me go ahead and see what kind of length of this I'm going to need. So I'm just going to want to come from there, down in, uh, I don't want it too short, I don't want it too long either, I think about like that will be perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and get my wires ready, oh, I'm going to go ahead and turn on my solderer there, I'm going to need that to heat up. I'm going to prep my wires now. I'm going to get them all. Now, soldering, uh, in my opinion, uh, no, uh, you don't have, it's not necessary to, to know how to solder uh, as a nitro, as someone running a nitro vehicle. Uh, but uh, it's a good skill to have. And uh, anyone who has been doing RC in general. Uh, I've done nitro for probably 15 or so years now, but I've done electric for crap, 30, 35. Uh, I used to build my own uh, battery packs. Uh, I've done plenty of uh, soldering in my day. Uh, I'm looking for a razor knife. Why can't I find one? Uh, to trim my trim my wires here. Uh, you know what? Hold on a sec. Let me find something to strip these wires. I'll be right back. All right. Found me a razor here. Now, what I generally usually do when I'm stripping wire is I just kind of take my razor, push it in. And just pull it away like such. Spin it around, obviously. Get it cut all the way around. And then peel it right on off. Alright. So. Uh, where is... Uh, gotta have flux. For soldering uh, and I tell you what this I've had these two this thing uh, it, it's holding in like a champ but I probably got maybe another year or two on this I've had this set for over 10 years maybe 15 years long time but you can see uh, how many times I've uh, wire dipped into here 
this is kind of what I'll do. I'll take my wires uh, nice and spread open, right? They're not twisted yet. And I'll plunge them into the flux. And then I'll take, give them a twist. And wipe my hand off. Let me see how my soldering iron's doing. Got me a, oh, we, can we see that? Got me a nice piece of wet paper towel down there to clean it off. Uh, get me some solder on these. Some flux on these. Give them a little twist. Now, uh, one thing I always sometimes forget is to put my heat shrink tubing on uh, before you solder. That's very important. Uh, you got to do that before you solder. So, which one am I going to use? Of course, uh, I got a big thing of uh, heat shrink tubing, and I've been using the same bag for years, so the normal size stuff is about gone, and so I just got a bunch of big and small stuff left in here. Uh, that'll have to do what that do. We'll see how it shrinks. It's pretty big. I got yeah, this could easy I got something that could easily go over one wire, but this is gonna need to go over two. Alright, let me that's a little bit long. So I've got me a couple pieces of heat shrink. Put those over these yeah that's some big heat shrink all right now i'm going to go ahead and tin all of my uh wires i'm going to uh, fill all the ends of these wires with solder so i'm going to take my iron get plenty of solder on it Tin that one up nice. Beautiful. Hold the wire on there. You, you want to make sure you, you get the wire good and hot. So it can accept the solder and soak it all the way down into the pores. Get these last two. All the way around. Make it a mess. All right. So, as you can see, we've got uh, some nice tinned uh, wires there. They're nice and soaked with solder. So then, uh, I'm just going to connect in here. I'm going to do... Uh, Gonna do pieces of heat shrink tubing over each wire, and then I'll do one big piece over both of them. So I'll put that one on here. All right, and on this wire, I uh, the positive is marked with a line, so I'm gonna the line is gonna be positive, and the non-line is negative so 
I just get some solder on my iron, get this nice and hot, and join these two. Make sure that solder is flowing. Get that solder nice and hot so you make sure that you get a good connection. Got it a bit too hot, took it a second. Oh, and my heat shrink tube got a little messed up. All right, but we've got solid connections. They're not the prettiest, but they are uh, darn solid. So I put my heat shrink tubing over them. And you know what? Let me go ahead and do my, uh, before I unplug this to plug in my heat gun to shrink the tubing, uh, let me go ahead and solder my Dean's plug onto the other end. All right, so I decided this video was a good amount longer. Uh, anyone who noticed, I was about to put the wrong, and I, I did put the wrong Dean's plug on there. I put a uh, female plug on there when I was supposed to put a male. Uh, females here go on the battery, not on the device you're powering. Uh, but uh, I took it off, put the proper one on there, and I figured, uh, you saw what I was going to do. Uh, I got the wire running straight through the handle. Uh, cut me a little access hole in there for the wire to come through uh, and I got a proper plug on there now so I could take my lipo lipo battery plug it in I probably won't be running this with a 4s uh, I think that's plenty of juice but as you see, uh, you got a good working. It, it starts every time you hit the button. You don't got to worry about the, the plug coming loose. And throw it right in and spins the motor over beautifully. All right. That is a little modification on the roto starter probably gonna run this with uh, a 3s lipo battery uh, i think a, probably a 2s would work just fine uh, but certainly a 3s will work great uh, and uh, it's a lot more reliable now uh, with the dean's plug in it so thank you all very much for watching see you all in the next video have a great day